Um, I specialize in the interoperability, integration, and EDI areas. Um, lately, working in the interop areas uh, more. Um, Cambia Health Solutions is, just to kind of give you a background, is a pair. Um, we are a nonprofit health insurance corporation based in Portland, Oregon. We sell health insurance through several subsidiaries. We are a franchisee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. And we operate in four uh, states. We also invest in non-insurance healthcare technology and service companies through our direct health um, services arm. Our cause is basically to serve as a catalyst to transform healthcare, creating a person-focused and economically sustainable system. And this is basically the, the guiding principle of our uh, development in FIRE. To talk about the business case, it's a, it's a pretty simple business case, um, considering that this is our first FIRE application that we have um, gone live with. Uh, the business case is basically to deliver um, admin discharge transfer notifications to an external business partner for uh, care management. And the objectives behind uh, achieving or implementing this business case um, are basically use of uh, standards-based interoperability solution um, that can enable us to reuse what we do across uh, different business partners. And at the same time, we also wanted to leverage the uh, benefits of uh, cloud-based deployment. Here's a summary of technologies used as part of our application. Uh, we use the very well-known Happy Fire reference implementation, um, uh, which is, I th in our opinion, one of the most robust implementations out there. Uh, it's built on Java Tomcat platform. Uh, for those who are uh, runtime uh, platform uh, savvy, the Fire build that we are using as part of this solution is the latest build, STU3. Um, the cloud environment that uh, we have deployed our application on is the AWS, Amazon AWS environment. Again, very um, um, well used uh, ecosystem out there. The external authentication uh, platform that uh, we are using is Apigee, which is an API management gateway to manage uh, typical APIs out there. Uh, and under the cover, Apigee uses OAuth2, uh, which is uh, basically the authentication authorization framework for, for applications out there. We are using various runtime implementation technologies, uh, ranging from Node.js to Java to PySpark, Apache Pass PySpark. Um, and we are adopting, or we have adopted, the infrastructure as, uh, as code uh, principle in all our deployments. We're using Ansible uh, scripts to, to deploy uh, and provision uh, resources. Security, as you know, is very important in, in healthcare, and especially important in healthcare. Um, and as pairs, we have to uh, uh, be very um, prepared uh, considering the various state and federal regulations that we have to uh, abide by. I said uh, we are using Apigee uh, for our API management, and that kind of gets us uh, some of the uh, security features, uh, specifically the API management and Apigee OAuth2 uh, for authentication authorization. Uh, we are also using uh, an attribute-based uh, access control model for fine-grained data authorization. And we are using um, the Zacamole standard to, uh, to implement that. And that's the basic underlying um, goal behind all our implementations is to leverage standards as much as possible. Uh, as far as data, 
uh, data in flight uh, is encrypted uh, using HTTPS, uh, which is the, the protocol used for APIs, web APIs. And at rest, we are doing uh, data encryption uh, at the server, the, the storage server. And in our case, it is uh, AWS uh, MySQL. This is uh, just a picture of the sort of um, technology tools that, uh, that are uh, part of the AWS ecosystem. Um, there's a link in the presentation for anyone wanting to kind of dig deeper, but basically this kind of gives you an idea of what you have if you want to deploy your application to the cloud, um, like AWS. HIPAA is uh, an integral portion of uh, whatever we do uh, at Cambia, and uh, uh, almost all, all the pairs uh, are, are affected by it, and, and they have to consider um, HIPAA in all the applications that they develop. There are HIPAA considerations when you store uh, data, and like I said, we are encrypting uh, data at rest, um, there are various tools offered by AWS that are uh, SARTA HIPAA compliant. Uh, for example, DynamoDB. You can use DynamoDB database uh, as long as you do your own encryption. Um, and for that reason, we uh, selected the, the next option, which is the RDS MySQL. Uh, we basically allow the database server to do the encryption for us. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea, there's, there's options out there um, that may not all be HIPAA uh, compliant um, out of the box. There's technologies, other technologies that we're using that are not yet HIPAA compliant, so we are careful not to put um, PHI and PII information on those, uh, on those tools and platforms. Uh, SQS, SNS, Lambda are some of those uh, technologies. And obviously, uh, as and when AWS makes them HIPAA compliant, we will switch uh, to using those for, for HIPAA information. There's a link um, in the bottom to th that kind of talks about uh, the HIPAA uh, compliance um, topic for AWS. This is a um, high-level diagram of our solution. Uh, again, the solution is very simple, um, and I would say FHIR makes it very simple. The primary source of our ADT information um, is uh, clearinghouses, facilities that, uh, that send us ADT messages in the form of uh, version 2 HL7. The intake currently happens uh, on-prem right now. Uh, we have um, we are planning to migrate that to the cloud um, as part of our roadmap. Uh, but other than intake, the transformation of the HL7 version 2 message to um, fire happens uh, in the cloud. And our fire server and the fire repository, they're all hosted on the, on the cloud, AWS cloud. The API is uh, basically exposing um, two kinds of uh, or two flavors. The first flavor is a streaming API uh, for uh, partners that need a stream of um, ADT notifications in, in FHIR format. The other uh, flavor is for partners that need historical access to encounters. Um, typically, partners needing uh, data analytics and uh, other um, other, other use cases. About the implementation, we're using the fire messages paradigm um, to, to, to implement this solution. Um, this is a very well-known paradigm that is uh, quite suitable for uh, this kind of uh, use cases where uh, ADT messages are involved and, and there is streaming involved. Consists of a bundle resource um, containing message header and um, other resources that are part of the message. The encounter is the, the main resource that uh, stores the 
the ADT information here. As far as coming up with the, the list of resources and identifying uh, gaps between what we need and uh, what's available in FIRE, because um, FIRE is, is still in, in, in development. Uh, we heavily relied on the Zulip um, FIRE chat to, uh, uh, to, to get the resource definition updated where we saw gaps, uh, and uh, also to extend resources where uh, we thought a local uh, or, or, a, or a special case was, was needed. Lessons learned. Um, one of the main thing that we uh, uh, learned was how to um, give back to the fire community uh, by way of uh, uh, the gaps that we were able to close uh, uh, with, with our implementation between uh, resources that are out there and resources that uh, might be useful uh, in the implemented form. And also, um, uh, how to create extensions and, and how to decide if uh, an extension is necessary. As part of our further learning, we plan to uh, introduce profiles in our solution um, and also uh, leverage the subscription framework um, that is prescribed by the standard uh, in, our, uh, in our solution. Uh, also, terminology and vocabulary servers, they are also in our roadmap. Uh, but again, they are advanced concepts that we plan to kind of uh, implement at a later stage. That's all I got. Thank you.